when we started, privacy has always been part of the vision because we see issues that we uh, experience in Web2 uh, and with all the data abuse, all, all, the, all the behavior, all the practices there. Uh, and uh, we want to build a privacy uh, network. And then we did it. Uh, actually, we managed the network back in 2020. So we have the modular architecture that is scalable and secure that allow us to do what we do today. Uh, and what we meant by modular is that we separate compute from the consensus. And if you think about our network that, you know, there is a consensus layer and on top of the consensus there is a compute layer and then you have different runtime that is uh, suitable for your own compute needs. Currently we have three official uh, runtimes on the network. Uh, there is the uh, EVM compatible network. Uh, there is a confidential EVM network, which is the uh, uh, star of the day. And the third will be the WebAssembly compatible based uh, runtime. Uh, that's more for non-EVM WebAssembly Rust developers. You cannot uh, build a real Web3 without being uh, scalable because the users like us, we're used to everything being rendered so fast uh, to us. Uh, if things are not as fast as we expect, you know, people, you're just not going to get users. Second will be privacy. And I know a lot of people here probably do not really think about privacy as something that uh, they should immediately think of when they build a dApp, uh, but uh, that's the thinking that we are hoping to change going forward. Is that you know in Web two, like you know we migrate smoothly from HTTP to HTTPS. Like these days, you go to a URL, go to a website. It doesn't start with HTTPS. I think you will get a notification from the browser saying that are you sure what you want to proceed, right? So we think that's how Web three is going to be in the future. Is that Currently, all the most of the smart contracts stay uh, is public. That's how things have been over the past uh, many, many years. But that's now uh, the thing should be in the future. Uh, all the developers, the developers, whether you're Solidity or other uh, other programming languages, you should at least have the flexibility to configure smart contracts. Like you have a DAB that you believe is fully transparent. That's okay. But some of the smart contract maybe is not suited to be fully public, like some of the smart contracts in DeFi, like to prevent the front running and maybe problem, you don't necessarily want to have users trading parameter to be reviewed 100% uh, uh, on chain. Uh, and the third is, you know, uh, we want to just like, you know, you have an ident identity, you have your Facebook account, you have your TikTok account uh, in Web2, in Web3, we also want to have identity, uh, this kind of DID and to support uh, the future of Web3. Uh, and that also requires uh, privacy uh, because, uh, you know, identity should just be more than just a, a binary data. Like, there is a more data uh, that people should have selective disclosure about whether that's your credit score, your education background, uh, all these very comprehensive, complex data that people should be able to control how they want their data to be used and shared. In real world, when you're in the middle of voting process, the things, every ballot, all the ballots, is not necessarily public. It's actually private. And uh, because you don't want the early voters to bias, anchor the late voter to keep the voting process private is actually a good thing. You know, improve the governance so you can have more productive, uh, efficient uh, voting process, as well as, you know, voting member uh, will be able to uh, exercise um, that kind of freedom when, when they vote. Uh, and the second, I think for DeFi, I talk about, you know, like, you know, you don't want to have this front run sandwich attacks. So being able to selectively encrypt those trading parameters uh, is, uh, is also a good thing. Uh, and third will be gaming. Most of the gaming, uh, game logic is actually off-chain these days. But as we move things towards Web3, you want to have more things, um, you know, be more transparent. You want to be able to have more things move on-chain uh, versus uh, uh, stay off-chain. Uh, and the fourth, last but not least, you know, like we talk about the DID is like, you know, you want to be able to selectively disclose what kind of uh, uh, data is shared with uh, dabs or other projects who are using the identity. And it's not necessarily the same, like, you know, the data you should want to share with this dab is not necessarily the same uh, as the data you share with other dabs. Uh, it's all depending on, on the use cases, but users, the data owners yourself should be able to have that right as to how you want to share your data. Running dApps on Sapphire, um, you know, the fees are much, much cheaper than running things on Ethereum. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's EVM compatible, so it's identical user developer experience, uh, just as, you know, your, your user experience on Ethereum. Uh, at Oasis, currently we're using uh, secure hardware uh, for the uh, confidential compute, specifically the trust execution environment. 
Uh, it is uh, fast, it's uh, scalable, and also has the composability. It's also suited for uh, general computing. Uh, it can entertain uh, arbitrary computation, which is other um, confidential compute technologies will not be able to entertain uh, at the moment. I'm sure maybe in many, many years uh, they will be able to get there, but currently we're using TE primarily for those reasons. Fast, suitable for general computing, uh, and also composability. What we meant by privacy layer for Web3, so the concept here is basically uh, a DAP, uh, such as a DAO, you know, you're running on Ethereum, and uh, if you just want to use always private solutions for making the voting process private, you stay where you are because Ethereum is where you, your users are, you know, your users hold, you know, ETH, they don't necessarily want to hold other tokens that require for gas and on other networks, and that's probably fine. You know, you stay where you are, where user liquidity are, where you get to solve the user's problems, and you only use Oasis private solutions for that specific uh, problem that you think can improve the governance, which is the, uh, the voting process. The user don't need to know that Oasis Sapphire uh, even exists. User get to stay on the home chain, which is in this case Ethereum, it could be other EVM networks, uh, and the secret logic stay on Sapphire, on the Oasis network. So think about a home network, let's just assume this uh, is Ethereum, and the Sapphire network is the uh, uh, confidential EVM. So user uh, is basically, let's say, DAO's user, and you have a DAO deploy on Ethereum. Your user, let's say, want to vote on a specific proposal, uh, and uh, uh, what they do is that, you know, they go to the DAB uh, and uh, they kind of like vote, just like how they would vote, um, you know, uh, on a DAO. And uh, they sign the transactions, and we have this uh, gas layer, gas station network, that basically allow them to convert a little bit of ETH. You know, the gas fees on Sapphire is very cheap, uh, and, and then convert a tiny bit of the ETH into the native token, the gas token required on Sapphire to allow the confidential compute to be conducted. But the user don't need to acquire the native token of Sapphire at all. They don't need to acquire any token. They don't even know Oasis slash Sapphire exit you know, on the back end. Um, so they sign the transactions and then on the DAP deploy the uh, secret uh, voting smart contract on Sapphire and all the ballots go into this confidential EVM and does a compute, which is very basic compute in this case, which is basically aggregate all the ballots. And uh, once the voting process is concluded, they collect the ballots and uh, aggregate the results and send a message via the message passing bridge, which is also cross-chain bridge, uh, to the home chain. So even if you have the voting process uh, uh, private, and, uh, and you, you still want to be transparent, that's perfectly okay, you know, you still get to collect the, uh, the ballots as well as the voting results back to, uh, back to the home chain. So you can still publish each address ballot even uh, after the voting process is concluded. So you do get to continue to stay very transparent throughout the process. Last but not least, this is the hackathon. So we're launching the privacy for uh, Web3 hackathon. Um, very, very soon.